Hello, FOSDEM. My name is Eric Harris-Brown. I am the co-founder of Holochain and Holo. And I'm assuming that you, the audience, are open source software developers, which gives me some footing on how to share what I want to share today, which is a demonstration of a tool that's built on Holochain that explores the space of what I think of as the hard problem, that hard problem being collaboration. So my solution to hard problems generally looks like this. Find the grammar that represents in some way the hard problem space and let distributed exploration of expressions in that space using the grammar answer the questions that are hard. So that's the that's the um, that's the punchline. That's where we're going to get to finding the grammar that represents this hard problem space and creating expressions in that grammar to explore that space, the space being collaboration. Open source software development is full of grammars that are examples of this level up of this solution to the hard problem of collaboration. Things like release early, release often, lots of eyes on the problem, forking, pull requests, blah, 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 blah. We know the power in open source of the level up in collaboration. But we also know that open source software development struggles with another aspect of one of the hard problems of or hard parts of the problem of collaboration, and that is social coherence. Open source software's openness creates divergence, which is a power, but convergence and coherence can be difficult. And in fact, this is where my core passion lies and is at the core and the root of Holochain as um, a tool. Holochain is a platform for building distributed social coherence by making it easy to write social games where all players can validate that other players are playing by the rules of the game. I'll say that again. Holochain is a platform for building distributed social coherence by making it easy to write social games where all players can validate that other players are playing by the rules. Or more simply, it's a grammar for social pattern creation. Well, that might sound good in general, but what about in specific? So what I'm here to demonstrate is a specific use case of building social coherence. And that is a program I call WHERE. WHERE uses the grammatics of Holochain to provide a social game that answers the question, WHERE? This is a key question for building social coherence in teams. And how do I do that in where? Well, I do it by the same pattern, which is creating a higher level grammar for expressing the spaces and marking locations in those spaces that a team might want to increase its shared held context about. So let's jump into the demo. What I've got here are three agent instances running on the Holochain runtime and being rendered and displayed in through a web browser on localhost. So remember that what Ware is helping us do is helping a team be able to share context. The simplest context, the simplest map in space is physical location. So imagine a simple check-in at the beginning of a team where you want to know where everybody comes from, where their place of birth is in the world. So I, given that I was born in South America, I would place my avatar near the, where that was born. Another person, let's say Herbert here, may have been born in the UK. Uh, so maybe they put themselves in the UK and they, you see, they can already see where I, I am. And then the final person, Jane, hmm, who knows, where is Jane from? Perhaps Melbourne. So we'll put Jane there and this becomes instantly visible on everybody else's instance of the application. Physical location is the simplest and perhaps the least interesting one, although often quite valuable when you're trying to do sort things out like time zones. You could have a time zone map here instead to figure those things out. But uh, for example, let's think about a different space. Like let's say what you wanted to do in your team is get the shared context of where you are emotionally um, as a team and especially do that kind of check-in on a regular basis. Well, I'm opening up the spaces tab and where we can see other spaces, I have preloaded an emotions map where I might say, well, I'm right now, uh, my emotional state at this moment is quite curious to see how this talk is gonna end up landing. So I might put myself here. Meanwhile, 
Herbert uh, might say, eh, on the team, I'm actually a little grumpy. I didn't really want to come here. So I'm going to be, I'm a little let down maybe. And Jane, on the other hand, um, let's move to Jane's tab and open up her window. Uh, she might be kind of surprised that, wow, this is really quite an interesting uh, a thing I didn't know that it could happen, so I'm going to be I'm going to put myself as Jane here between somewhere between amazed and excited and excited. There are all kinds of other conceptual spaces that teams can use to know and share context and come into more coherence. Here's an interesting one. It's the Iron Triangle of cost, quality, and time. Oftentimes, it teams fight against each other because they don't know that they're actually fighting for something that's valuable to the team. And if you had a shared understanding of that, it might be easier to listen to why somebody is arguing for some particular quality, some particular aspect of a project. So for example, I tend to inter be interested in getting things done quickly. And quality, well, you know, I think you can always iterate. So I would put myself over here. And did you notice we have um, a different window popping up because you can do more than just put your avatar in a particular location. This is where we're getting into the grammatics of location inside of space. Here, what this particular marker allows you to do is type in some tag. And let's say that what we're saying is the reason why. So why for my location would be something like, you can always iterate. Iterate. Oh, there's probably two T's in iterate. All right. Whereas. Herbert might say, let's go to the, the Iron Triangle for Herbert. Herbert might say, nah, I'm stand for making things done, doing it, doing it cheaply because our budget is low. Limited budget. And Jane, she might be interested in quality because why would you do it if it's not great? So here we're beginning to see some of the grammatics that's possible inside this tool. So what is the grammar of where, of being able to answer that question and share context well? We've already seen a couple things. We've seen spaces and locations in those spaces. So let's take a look at how we can use those and create those elements grammatically in where. The first thing we want to be able to do, of course, is create new spaces. So obviously we want to be able to render different images, different surfaces in the 2D space where we get to click and place locations. So let's just go and let's do a Google search for matrix of good and evil. We're going to have a little fun here. Um, and let's take a look at some more of these images and pick one that seems like it might be amusing. Like how about this one right here? Let's copy this image link, right? And then we're going to pop back into where, and we're going to create a new space. I'm going to click on new space. Well, this one is the um, the the D and D, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, alignment matrix, and the URL. Well, let's take a preview of it. This looks like it'll be pretty good. So this is an easy way, bam, you've created a new surface, um, a new TD, a 2D map to be able to place things in. But let's take a little look at the kinds of markers that we can put on there. This is also part of the grammatics of where. Well, we've already seen you can put an avatar and we already saw that you can put tagging. You can enable marker tagging about what it is that you're, some, some text that you might want to associate with the mark in your location. And you can do other interesting things, like you can either display that on the surface or not, have it be um, um, hovered over. And you can create predefined tags, which is another grammatical um, element that one can do to be able to generate um, interesting uses of this tool. But for now, let's just stick with this one just so that we can see how well it works. Um, we're going to use the avatar again. Um, and we're going to uh, allow for tags. So I'm going to create that one. And here we go. What am I? Am I lawful good, neutral good? <laughs> I have no idea. Let's 
pretend that uh, I am a true neutral like an ant. And so I would put myself up here. And, and it's interesting to ask, what would be the question that you would be associating with this that you might want to tag? I think maybe when, when are you neutral good? Well, I'm neutral good um, at work, but not uh, at other times. So I might put that in there. So my avatar is on there and I pop over it and I can see something. And Herbert uh, will need to refresh and reload to pull this information out of the DHT. If you're Holochain savvy, you see how that works. Um, and I can click on it and well, you know, um, Herbert is actually tends more over towards chaotic evil because it's fun. Another example of the grammatics that are afforded by the WHERE application is, as in open source software development, forking. So for example, let's take a look at Earth. We had here place of birth, but somebody might say, you know what, I like this, but I want to add to it um, something else more than just where you are, but some aspect of yourself. So I'm going to go and I'm going to fork this space. And it brings up a copy of the space with all the settings as you had from before. And we're going to change it. And I'm going to call this um, birthplace plus, plus location. Place, no, not location, plus zodiac. Plus zodiac. And you'll see how this is an interesting use also of the grammatics of the avatar. One of the kinds of avatars that you, one of the kinds of markers that you can pick is an emoji subset. And what I have here, um, a pre-designed one, is a subset of the emojis that exist, which are the zodiac signs. So um, in this particular version of the game, you would, instead of just putting in your place of birth, um, when you were playing the game of, um, shared alignment you might put in the you might choose your zodiac sign so i'm going to choose the one that looks like holo because i think that's fun and so it's not my face that goes down but in fact that emoji that goes down another bit of grammatics that uh, we've added into where is what we call iterations so in this case i showed an emotion map that uh, you would play one time but we're going to fork this space and what we're going to do is we're going to click over in the iterations tab. You can create iterations, which are basically tabs um, that collect up um, the, the markers, the locations over time. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can have predefined, predefined ones. So for example, you might have three different scenarios that you might want to see what, what one's emotional reaction would be. So an example might be success, failure, middle of the road. And in this case, when you create this map, you've got three different scenarios in which you would locate your emotions. The other thing that you can do with that is you can create a tab that will be create a new tab every day. So you might want to have something like that for a standup. The, the key point that I'm trying to share here is how creating grammatical affordances allows the possibility to explore a question, a concept that creates social coherence. And my hope is that you can see how that's beginning to go here. Because all of you are coders, or so is my supposition, developers here at FOSDEM, there's one other level of grammatics that I think is kind of fun. And it's a little techy. The user experience isn't so great at it. Um, but that is templates. So templates allows you to create um, actual SVG or HTML files that then um, you can fill out the values of. So for example, that's what this project triangle, the iron triangle comes from. So I'll give you an example here. So if I create a space, I can flip the template to the iron triangle template. And what you see inside here is one, two, three different parameters. So this might be some other set of um, qualities that you're interested in having a sense of, of shared context around rather than cost quality and time. I don't know, something like good, um, true, and beautiful. Um, 
And so we would put them in here, the good, the true, and the beautiful. Good, true, beautiful. And you can see that that will create a new triangle using those values. How is that done? Well, I'm going to fork this template just to give you a, a view of how that's done. If this is just an SVG file in which there are some, some spot in the SVG file has a um, percent percent with the template name, the field name that should be rendered. You saw when we created the template, there was param one, param two, param three. You could template whatever you want in here. And you can also do this kind of template with HTML, with a canvas, and with SVG for very, doing very complex templating for interesting surfaces that you might want to fill out or make it easy for other people to fill out variations on. As you can see, we filled out here in the triangle. And that's a different kind and a different level of grammatics for creating types of spaces that we might want to know our location in. As another example, we created one that is um, a quadrant box, right? So here, this is a very standard quadrant people like to do up and down with the left axis, right axis, and you can fill that out. And this particular template is also, I think this one is done um, also uh, using SVG. Okay, so how can you try this yourself in Holochain? Well, it's super easy. All you have to do is two different things. You um, can go to GitHub Holochain Launcher Releases. And this brings you to um, a place where you can download the Holochain uh, runtime. So let's take click the latest one. You would simply scroll down under Assets and download the launcher for your particular environment that you want to use. And uh, let me show you what that looks like when you've um, downloaded it and you've run it. The other thing you want to do is you want to go to where, which is github.com lightning rod labs, where releases, and you want to download the very latest version of where. Again, under the assets, you will download this file called where.webhack. And then I will show you how you run this inside the launcher and what that looks like. Once you've launched the launcher, what you should see is a window like this. And if you have downloaded the web app file, you click on the install new app button. It should bring up um, the page and your downloads folder where you will have downloaded it to. You can just double click on it. Here you'll see an install app ID. The fun thing to do and the important thing to do is type in a unique name that you share with the people who you're going to be working with in your team so that you create a, a unique network. Otherwise, you'll be talking with everybody in the world. So here we might do something like FOSDEM install the app and there you have your app up and running you can click it you can open it by just clicking on open and it will launch the app in a browser um, again served from localhost and you might type in your avatar here you can see the avatars i was using for the test and uh, um, i will use herbert's avatar and type in the name again herbert and here i have um, the app opening up with a bunch of the default templates that we have in the system, uh, many more than the ones that you saw in the example before that you can play with. So that's how you can get up and running. If you do this with a group of people, you will have um, connected in a fully peer-to-peer -peer way playing this social game. So the final thing I want to share is uh, some questions about what is different about playing this kind of social game, i.e. this web app, in an environment where there was no server, where deployment was just what you saw? I think there's something important about the practicality of it, the reduced barrier to entry, that anybody can install the runtime and then simply download the web app file for the, the DNA and the user interface and run it. And the full game, the socially connected game, happens in a peer-to-peer -peer way. That I think is pretty interesting, trivial deployment. And the second thing is the safety that occurs inside that space because of the fact that you know that there is no third party other than the people who are playing the game where the data is going. It's only going among the people who are playing that game. 
not some central place where the data can be pulled off and used for other purposes. So I think that's pretty interesting and may have some pretty far reaching consequences. I hope you've enjoyed this collaboration teaser of where it's built as an experiment in the grammatics of collaboration. And um, I look forward to hearing from you and learning what kind of collaboration tools and games you want to create. Thank you.